Do you want to find out what happens in this crazy sequel? Let's talk about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. David Stark from Watcher Pass, or maybe in this multiverse, I'm David Starker. I have been bitten by a radioactive spider, and now I'm here to tell you all about Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Hey, you know what? It could happen. There's a lot of Spider-Verses out there, um, but I'm going to talk about this specific one. It comes to theaters on June 2nd, 2023. This is going to be a spoiler review, so uh, if you want to know what happens in this movie, keep watching. If you don't want to know what happens, if you don't want to know what happens, I would turn this off now. I would check out my non-spoiler review. You can see that. There will be no spoilers there. Uh, this is going to talk about things that happen in the movie, things that happen in the story. So if you don't want to know, turn it off now. Uh, quickly to recap, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the sequel to the fantastic 2018 Into the Spider-Verse. It is a great movie. It does everything that the first movie did, but bigger and more epic. I really liked it. I didn't actually love it as much as the first movie for a, a few reasons, but mostly because it has an unsatisfying ending. And that's because it ends in a cliffhanger, and you're going to find out more about that now. The things I did love about it, I love the animation. It is phenomenal, just like the first one, and kind of bigger in all aspects. Uh, it's funny. I love the humor. It is. Uh, it has some great style, especially all the different spider verses that you get to visit and all the different kind of character styles that intermingle in this movie. I love the music. It's another great soundtrack. And I love that this film is epic. It does everything bigger. It, uh, the, the consequences are greater. The kind of number of spider people is greater. Everything about this movie is bigger than the first one. But things I didn't love, it's a little bit long. Uh, I actually didn't mind it that much, but my kids uh, thought it was a little bit long. So that was, you know, tough to deal with. And it was a little bit darker than the first movie. Again, I like that, but my kids didn't love it as much. The, th the thing that I didn't love, the thing that kind of soured the experience a little bit, is there is an unsatisfying ending to this movie. It ends in a cliffhanger. We'll have to wait until later to find out what fully happens. But I will tell you what happens in this movie now. So again, there will be spoilers. If you don't want to know what happens in this film, I would turn it off now. So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is a sequel from Into the Spider-Verse, and it continues a story that where that movie left off. If you remember, at the end of Into the Spider-Verse, Miles is able to rise to his Spider-Man calling and close the portal that was created by the Super Collider, send all the Spider-Men back to their world, which was great for them, but it also meant that Miles lost all the people that really understood who he was. Now... After they got sent back, we start in, across the Spider-Verse in Gwen Stacy's world. She's living her life. She's, she's a very punk rock superhero, and she's still doing that. But she misses her friend Miles and having some issues with her dad. But eventually, a strange creature enters Gwen's world. It is a vulture that looks kind of like a Da Vinci-style vulture. It looks like it's from a, a multiverse that is like in the 14... Hundreds is essentially Da Vinci's vulture and it's drawn into Gwen Stacy's world and destroys this kind of like museum of art. So Gwen has to go fight it, but she's not alone. She's joined by Spider Woman, a, a badass motorcycle riding spider character, and Miguel O'Hara, Spider Man 2099, who helped to take out the vulture. They kind of have to use all their powers to do it. And it turns out that uh, that Spider Man 2099 and Spider Woman they're going through the multiverse fixing creatures that cross dimensions they go and they stop them take them back and then eventually send them back to their home world they're about to leave when they also decide to let gwen stacy come along also it seems like there is a small group of spider characters that have this interdimensional ability and they recruit gwen stacy to help them out she's perfectly fine with this because during this fight she had to reveal that she was spider woman to her dad who couldn't really process it. She thinks He thinks that Spider-Woman killed Peter Parker in this world. And so he is conflicted between his daughter and kind of his job. He still tries to arrest her, even though he finds out it's Gwen Stacy. He can't really see past that. And so she just wants to get away. She doesn't want to deal with this. So she follows um, Spider-Man 2099 and Spider-Woman into this like cross-dimensional spider-verse so now we go back to miles's world earth 1610 uh, each of the earths is a different number there's a bunch of them miles is earth 1610 and in miles's world he fights this new kind of super villain i guess he's kind of like this bumbling villain called the spot who seems to be able to open uh kind of portals throughout and he can so and he can open portals between the worlds to move through he's not really that good at it yet it seems to be he seems to be still kind of like learning his ability so 
Miles confronts him and tries to stop him. It is a fun fight. It is an interesting kind of like mind bending fight because portals open up here and there, and sometimes they're intentional, sometimes they're not. But eventually, Miles seems to stop him. He kind of ties him up through various different portals and makes him and immobilizes him. And then he has to go quickly because he always has to balance being Miles, being a kid, going to school with being Spider Man. And a little bit later, the spot finds Miles again. And now he explains a little bit more about what happens. He thinks that he's Spider-Man's nemesis. He thinks that he and Spider-Man are kind of like destined uh, to be arch enemies. So we find out that they are just not actually that random. The Spot was a scientist at Alchemex, and he brought this spider from Dimension 42 into their world. And that was the spider that escaped and eventually bit Miles and gave him his superpowers. Uh, the Spot was also the scientist that got the bagel thrown at him in Into the Spider-Verse. So connections there. And he was in the Collider when it blew up at the end of Into the Spider-Verse, which is what gave him his superpowers and turned him into the Spot. Unfortunately for him, he is mostly mocked for being a Spot. He doesn't seem to really enjoy it. And now he's trying to both survive because he lost his job after he became a Spot. And I think he's also a little upset at Spider-Man, so he's trying to get more and more powerful. Now, so after this second encounter with Spider-Man, the Spot goes into his own little, like, dimensional loophole and finds that he can go across the different dimensions in the multiverse. Uh, there are some really cool cameos here. He goes to a like a comic world, like a like a comic style world. He goes to a Lego world, which I thought was an interesting collaboration. There's like a Lego Spider-Man world. And he goes into the world where our friend Venom is, like the actual movie Venom. He goes into a little like liquor store market that uh, Eddie Brock goes into occasionally. And they have the actual actor who played the owner of that store in this film she interacts with the spot character in a fun little cameo i love that i love that they kind of like brought all that into this movie and it was a really fun little addition here as you may know venom is my favorite comic book character so i'm always happy to see some uh some venom cameos here and there so unfortunately for spider-man he is always so torn between all these different responsibilities that he's not really excelling at any of them. He's a pretty good Spider-Man, but he's not really a great son and or student. So eventually this leads to him being grounded by his parents. He's in his room moping because he messed up this like big promotion ceremony for his dad. And that's when he sees a little portal open above his bed and Gwen comes in. And you'll remember this. This was the scene at the end of Into the Spider-Verse when like, Miles was listening to music. Uh, I think he was listening to Sunflower in that scene. And Gwen like opened a portal saying, hi. Well, now you get to see this scene and what actually happens. Gwen opens a portal into Miles' world, says hi, and like hangs out with him for a little bit. And you think, oh, this is sweet. She tells him about this like special group that she's joined. Miles wants to join because he's like, oh, no, it's pretty exclusive. Uh, I don't know if there's any space for you. But she at least is coming by to see him. But But during their hangout time, Gwen slips away for a second to like, plant a little like observing spider bug to watch the spot and then she goes back to hanging out with miles but you think that maybe her visit here wasn't just a pure coincidence now eventually after they hang out a little more gwen has to leave and after she leaves she books it right back to where the spot was she goes to the spot where she put the drone but the spot's not there and there's all this like weird um spot portal matter in there all this like it's kind of dark matter that is in where the spot used to be and so gwen is worried that she maybe messed up she didn't think that this this villain was that big of a deal she, she thought that she could leave him for a couple hours hang out with miles and then go back and take him out but apparently that wasn't the case but apparently while she was gone the spot decided to enhance his powers and to go to various places where there were colliders remember the collider is what created him so he is now jumping between dimensions to try to go to various spider verses that have super colliders to absorb their power and become more and more powerful now eventually this leads him to earth 5101 which is a i guess like hindi version of spider-man this was really fun uh they are in mumbatan which is like mumbai manhattan combined it is a really beautiful part i really liked the like hindi spider-man that they created he is fun he is like irreverent he kind of has everything going for him but unfortunately for him, he has a super collider and the spot wants to kind of like take that power. So in this world, I'm going to call him Hindi Spider-Man. His real name is Pavadar Prabhakar, but uh, that was tough to say. So I'm just going to call him Hindi Spider-Man. Uh, he is here. You've got uh, Spider-Gwen and then you've got Miles Morales who followed Spider-Gwen into this world when she went to go follow the spot. And you also have uh, Spider-Punk who shows up to help them out. All four of them try to stop the spot, but they're not able to. He is just too powerful. And when he finally gets into the collider, 
Miles has a vision. He gets this vision from uh, the spot that says, like, essentially, he's going to take everything from Miles because Miles took everything from him. Remember, Miles caused the Clyro to explode. That is what created the spot, and that kind of, like, ruined his life. So now he wants to ruin Miles' as well. But in the aftermath of the Collider, the Alchemix lab kind of collapses and is about to fall onto this crowded highway. And so all the Spider-Men combine. They save everyone, in including this Inspector Singh, who is the love interest of Hindi Spider-Man. Pavadar was saving his own love interest on a bus when this was happening. He had to kind of choose between her and Inspector Singh. He chose her. But thankfully, Miles is there, and he saved Inspector Singh, so everything worked out fine, you think. Until they see the aftermath of this fight, there is a giant kind of, like, dark matter spot portal hole in this city. And that is when a bunch of other Spider-Men come in and start doing, like, a cleanup crew. And that is where you again meet. And because of this, everyone is... And because of this, Miles, Gwen, and the other Spider-Men are pulled... Are, are summoned back to Nuevo York, Earth 928, which is where Spider-Man 2099 lives. And it's not just Spider-Man 2099 here. There's This is like a spider haven. There are so many Spider-Men in this kind of headquarters. It is, it is kind of a sight to behold. You have essentially every Spider-Man you could possibly think of in this place. And including both Spider-Gwen and Peter B. Parker. Peter B. Parker from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is here as well. They go to see Miguel, who explains to Miles that what he did was actually a bad thing. Now, remember, he saved Inspector Singh. He saved him when, like, no one else thought he could. But Miguel explains to him that that was what was called a can event. And be the can events are shared experiences that all the Spider-Men in the different Spider-Verses have. You know, everyone loses someone that they love. Everyone kind of is bitten by a spider in some way. There's all these different events that you can track across the Spider-Verses for the various spider characters. And that is what kind of keeps them all together, keeps their kind of storyline consistent in these, and helps have some normalcy in these very different spider characters. Now, what uh, Miles did when he saved Inspector Singh, he like severed that canon event. And what happens in those instances is that the dimension itself, the like multiverse, that that event is supposed to happen in, can't contain it, and it, so it starts to collapse. How does Spider-Man 29 know? How does Spider-Man 29 know this? Well, he found a world where his family was still alive, and he decided to go in there and save his family and kind of live out his life there, be happy, uh, be happy in this world, raise his daughter. But because he stopped the canon event in this world, that world started to collapse, and eventually he lost everything. That entire world, like essentially imploded on itself. Because he saved, I guess, one person, the entire world uh, evaporated, and so I guess he lost all those people. And But now he's worried that Hindi Spider-Man's world is going to do that. Sometimes they can stop it, but not always. And because Miles saved Inspector Singh, that world is going to collapse. Now, that already happened, but it's always some sort of, like, captain-level character that is close to the Spider-Man that is killed. And in Miles' world, his dad is just about to promote to captain, he thinks that his dad is going to die, and he doesn't want Miles to prevent that like he did Inspector Singh. Miles obviously wants to go save his dad because it's his dad, and he doesn't really buy this whole, like, canon thing. But he tries to leave, but... But Spider-Man 29 captures him in this force field thing. Now, Miles never wanted to listen to other people and never wanted to kind of doubt his own abilities. Breaks out of this portal using his, like, shock hands... And tries to escape this insane spider world. This is one of the most amazing kind of sequences you will see. There are so many different spider characters, so many different cameos that try to stop him. And Miles is just going through, avoiding them, fighting them, you know, using his powers and trickery. And a little help from both Gwen and Peter B. Parker to escape from all of them. Eventually, he gets on this kind of like jet elevator that is going to the moon because this is a much more advanced earth than the one that we are used to and all the other spider-men are pursuing him and eventually uh spider-man 299 is on there trying to stop him and miles essentially admits that this was all a distraction to get all the spider-men onto this like uh jet elevator thing and then he 
jumps off, uses his like cloaking abilities to fall back down to the Spider-Man 2099 headquarters and get to the machine that sends things back to their dimension. He wants to go back to his dimension to save his dad. So he uses that device to scan his DNA and get sent back. But one thing you'll notice is, so Miles' Earth is Earth 1610. When he scans his DNA, the Earth that comes up is Earth 42, which is the DNA from the spider that bit him. No, he doesn't notice this. He doesn't seem to notice. This. He gets sent back to this Earth. Now, because Gwen helped him, because Gwen like defied Spider-Man 2099, she also gets sent back as does Peter B. Parker. So both of them get sent back to their world. They're kind of out of the spider crew. They're out of the club. So, and, and so they are sent back to their home worlds. Now, so when Miles gets to Earth-42, he sees his parents, he sees his mom, and tells, him, and tells her finally that he's Spider-Man. And she's like, who's Spider-Man? And he's like, you don't know who Spider-Man is? Remember, this is Earth-42. In Earth-42, the radioactive spider was taken out and sent to Miles' world where it bit Miles. And so in this world, there is no Spider-Man. There's no one to stop, I guess, the bad guys. And so this Earth-42 is very different. It's a little bit darker, but this Earth-42 has his mom and has his uncle. So he's hanging out with his uncle. He, you know, thinks everything is going to be great. But then he sees that his dad is dead in this multiverse. In this multiverse, his dad was the one that was killed. And while Miles is hanging out with his uncle, he finds out that the Prowler is still around. His uncle captures him as the Prowler and ties him up. Now, to Gwen's world, Gwen is there. She was sent back by Spider-Man 2099. She finally confronts her dad, tells him that she has to help, that she has to help a friend, that she can't lose another friend, and obviously she didn't kill Peter Parker. And her dad stops her partway through and says, he already quit being a cop. Uh, the job doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is Gwen. And so they have this really sweet, heartfelt moment and then he mentions that uh, there was this box that was left for her. And it is this, like, punk rock box that you see. And it's from Spider-Punk. Spider-Punk is this, like, anti-establishment, rebellious character. He was really fun throughout. Um, and he left her a dimensional watch, uh, I guess, in case the establishment decided to kind of turn against her, which it did. And so now she has the ability to jump to the Spider-Verses. So Gwen jumps to Miles' Earth, Earth 1610. So Miles isn't there, but when Miles gets captured by in Earth 42, she realizes that he's in trouble. Their spider senses tingle. And so she realizes that Miles is in a different Earth and she has to kind of gather some friends to help. So meanwhile, Miles wakes up in Earth-42, tied up in the kind of I don't know, work area of his uncle. And when Miles wakes up, he, you know, talks to his uncle, says, like, you're the Prowler. He's like, no, I'm not the Prowler. And then you see the Prowler show up. The Prowler walks towards Miles, takes off his helmet, and it's Miles. So in Earth-42, Miles is the Prowler because he was never bitten by the spider or no one was bitten by the spider. And so there's no Spider-Man to stop the Prowler. So you got Miles Earth-42 Prowler versus apparently Miles Earth-1610 Spider-Man. And so you see Miles as the Prowler approach Miles as Spider-Man. And in meanwhile, in Earth-1610, you have the spot popping in to start this big anomaly to get his revenge on Earth-1610 Spider-Man. But you also see that Gwen is using this uh, transport device that Spider-Punk gave her to good measure, she goes to Peter B. Parker's world and recruits him to help. Uh, he obviously jumps at the chance to help Miles. But you see that Gwen's not alone. She has an entire cast of Spider-Man with her. You've got Hindi Spider-Man. You've got Spider-Pig. You've got Spider-Punk. You've got Spider-Man Noir. You've got Penny Parker with her psychic robot. All of them are gathered to go help Miles. And now Peter B. Parker is coming too. So they are ready to go help Miles. And so you've got... Miles and Earth-42 captured by the Prowler, who is also Miles. You've got the spot in Earth-1610 ready to start this anomaly to destroy uh, both Sp Miles' life and maybe the multiverse itself. And you've got Spider-Gwen recruiting this crew of Spider-Men to go help them out. And also in the back burner, you've got Spider-Man 2099 and his whole crew of Spider-Men trying to stop Miles as well from saving his dad. What will happen next? Well, you'll have to wait to find out because that is where this ends. That is where it says to be continued. And during the credits, it is much more epic and dramatic than Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was. And you can see it's set up to have this conflict between 
Prowler Miles and Spider-Man Miles, they definitely are kind of like at odds in the credits. And I think that's going to be a big part of the next movie. And the credits also conclude with a line that says Spider-Man will return in Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. So there will be a sequel. When will that happen? I don't know. Probably a couple of years. It was, a, it was disappointing that this didn't conclude the story, but I'm excited to see where it goes next. Uh, one thing that was weird, though, was that like Spider-Man, when he left the Spider-Man 299 world, he was taking on Spider-Man left and right. Now, he wasn't like fighting them. He was kind of avoiding them and using his trickery. But there were some that he fought that he took out. But in Earth-42, he is captured pretty easily by his uncle, who isn't even the full Prowler, and then is worried about Miles Morales' Prowler when he should, at this point, be very confident in his abilities and be able to take them out. Maybe that was an act. Maybe it's a throw-off uh, Miles Morales' Prowler. I don't know. It seemed like a fairly genuine fear. So we will find out all of that when the next movie comes out. But that is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. It comes to theaters on June 2nd, 2023. Definitely check it out. And that, like I said, it does everything the first movie does except bigger and more epic. I didn't love it as much as Into the Spider-Verse. I thought Into the Spider-Verse was such a perfect overall story. But th this one was very good, much bigger, much crazier. But I didn't love that it kind of ended on a cliffhanger. But that being said, I still want to watch it again to see all the craziness. And you can watch it too on June 2nd, 2023. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.